Hey there, dude. Hi, guys. Good to see you here in San Francisco, California. I understand from the email that you want to know more about earthquake waves. Yes. I put together some demonstrations for you. Great. Let's talk about three different kinds of waves. The first two are S and P waves. They're called body waves because they travel through the body of the Earth. Mr. Lyle showed the other treehouse detectives those on the seismogram. Well, P stands for primary or compressional waves, and S is for secondary or shear waves. P waves make the Earth vibrate back and forth along the direction of motion. Let me show you with this slinky over here. Those don't look like the waves I'm used to seeing, like ocean waves. The wave you're used to seeing has up and down or side to side motion. This is like the shear wave or S wave. Looks like this. Another important difference between S and P waves is that P waves travel faster than S waves, almost twice as fast. I guess that means that P waves will always arrive first. That's right, and the difference in time between the arrival of the S and P waves can help us find the epicenter of the earthquake. What's an epicenter? It's the point on the Earth directly above the focus or the point where the earthquake originates. Have you ever heard about counting the seconds between seeing the lightning and hearing the thunder? I have, but I've never done it. Well, it works because light and sound travel at different speeds. For example, when you see the lightning, start counting. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. The sound arrived about three seconds after the lightning. That means the lightning is about one kilometer away. For earthquakes, first you feel a P wave. And seconds later, you'll feel a more powerful S wave. For local earthquakes, every second that you count means you're about eight kilometers further away from the epicenter. I don't think I'd be counting the seconds if I was in an earthquake. I think I would either. Now, the third and slowest of these waves, the surface wave, is the most destructive of them all. Here in California, they have to build structures to withstand these dangerous waves. How do they know how to do that? One way is for engineers to use shaky tables like these, only much bigger, to test their designs. Let's try it out. I'll bet my structure can withstand the greatest earthquake. We'll see who's the best engineer. I guess we have a little bit more to learn about the power of earthquakes. Dr. D, didn't you say we could experience an earthquake here at the museum? You need to go see my friend, Dr. Tang.